for the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins in the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Have you ever been playing Madden and it just feels like the game wants you to lose? It may sound crazy, but every video game has something called Dynamic Difficulty Adjustments, or otherwise known as DDA. Now while the average Madden player doesn't know what DDA is or what DDA stands for, they do know what Madden BS is, and it's something that happens in just about every single game. And it oftentimes can determine the outcome. So with this in mind, I decided to make a video highlighting the 10 most obvious things that we've all dealt with that changed the most when the game is either trying to help you win the game or lose the game. So keep an eye out for these things when they happen because the game could be trying to make you win or lose without you knowing it. Other than that, if you want to see more videos like this, as always, hit the like button and let me know in the comment section. Other than that, let's go and skip right into the video. Now, to me, the situations where DDA kicks in the most are the most critical situations. Scoring situations, like when you're close to the goal line, you'll see a lot of BS happen one way or the other. Situations that are really one down territory, like two point conversions, fourth and goal, fourth and inches, or even close games in the fourth quarter. You'll see here we have a critical situation where it's a two point conversion early in the game. You'll notice something very strange, and essentially this defensive player does not react at all, even though the ball whizzes is right over his head. If I stop this right here, you'll see that there's no way anybody has a better chance of catching this ball than the defensive player of the Buffalo Bills. He's lined up looking directly at the football right underneath the reticle where the ball is supposed to land, and he does not move at all, allowing the opponent to catch it for a two-point conversion. Here's another situation later in the game. The score is a three-point game with one minute left in the fourth quarter, and once again, you have another scenario where where a defensive player does not react. He essentially drops back into a set and just sits there until the drag comes open right in front of him before reacting after the ball is thrown. Another one is something that you can see when a running back seems especially dominant or hard to tackle. If you see consistent runs like this where the running back just won't go down, they get crazy fall forward animations. Like on this play here, you can see that the running back is contacted about four yards prior to the first down marker and somehow falls forward enough to pick up that first down. Sometimes it's understandable based off of the, who the running back is and who the defensive player is tackling, whether it's a cornerback or a safety, there's a huge size advantage. But in this next example, we have a small quarterback, a 5'10", Russell Wilson, getting contacted once again about four yards short of the line of scrimmage by just about any defensive player. He should go down immediately, but somehow he gets around and carries the defensive player for the exact amount needed for a first down. Let's rewind that back. It was third and 11. The play started at the 27-yard line, meaning he needed exactly to get to the 16. And sure enough, even though he got tackled starting at the 20, he got exactly what he needed to the 16 to get that first down. So if you're playing in a game and you feel like you're getting tackled immediately the second your running back gets hit, but your opponent is constantly getting those ridiculous fall forward animations, that might be the game's way of saying that they want you to lose. The next instance where DDA kicks in the most seems to be the fourth quarter, when there's not a lot of time left in a close game. This is typically where a lot of small things can really decide the outcome of games, and it's really hard to argue this late in the game. On this next play, you can see right here, it was fourth and four. I'm going for it from my own 21 because I'm up five. The play itself is a simple throw to a slanting receiver who is wide open, and for some reason, what? he is out of reach and unable to catch the ball. Now, if you rewind that back, there really is no reason at all that this pass was incomplete. You can see it's a simple slant. He's got about five yards of separation. I mean, from this angle, the defender looks absolutely cooked. I've already switched on and I'm trying to do a catch and run. And you can see moments later, it switches to an out of reach and it triggers an animation like this where there's no chance of me catching the ball at all. Now we go back to the quarterback. You can see there was no error message. There was no inaccurate bullet pass message. There was no uh, you know defensive related pressure. You can see I'm throwing from a clean pocket. I'm stepping in into the throw. Josh Allen has nobody even close to him, so it's not like Fearmonger or any defensive pressure could have gotten in the way. There's no likely reason at all this is an incomplete pass, other than the fact that the game wanted me not to complete the pass at that very moment. Now, why is that? To me, the answer is simple. Look at the situation. I'm up five late in the game, and the game will be much more exciting if I lose the ball and it gives my opponent a chance uh, to score and go ahead uh, with plenty of time left. I mean, I really think DDA isn't necessarily about deciding who wins or loses a lot of times, as it is about keeping the game close so that the game is much more engaging uh, throughout the course of the entire game. Because if I would have got that first down, the game would have been over. Instead, we get another crazy fall forward animation where you can see right here, my opponent's running back is getting tackled by two defenders, both of which have little to no effect. I mean, it was almost like he just went through my defenders like they weren't even there to take the go-ahead touchdown. 
Next up, we got Phantom Penalties. This is a little bit later in the game. This is when I got the ball back. You'll notice that the second the ball is snapped, I get a flag for an illegal offsize against the Cardinals. Now, if you go back and watch the actual play, my opponent did not make any adjustments pre-snap. He didn't move any linemen. He didn't move any linebackers, nothing. This was basically the, the stock defense that he was given, and somehow he still got a penalty, which means they either lined up offsides or... This was just a completely phantom BS penalty, which I'm really thinking the latter because ultimately, once again, the game is trying to keep this as close and competitive as possible. And ultimately, none of it mattered as I won the game on the very next play. Uh, even though I left my opponent 30 some seconds left to go, it did matter because he was unable to go down the field and score a touchdown. Now, while I do feel that DDA in most game modes like online head-to-head -head CFM franchise mode is really just meant to keep the game more engaging, like I said earlier, I feel the exact opposite when it comes to MUT. MUT is all about money. These cards right here represent money to EA, and all they ever really want to do is make you buy more and buy more and buy more. And I think by all means and standards that they will force losses on you to basically get you to a point where you think you need to buy new cards. The rest of these examples will take place in mud where all the rules are out the window. You'll see on this next play here, I call a cover two, which I pretty much called the entire game. And for some reason on this next play, one of the cover two deep safeties decides to just blitz. Nobody told him to do that. He just decided to do that, leaving the middle of the field wide open for a super easy one play touchdown uh, that, you know, before that my opponent couldn't score at all. Now, since I recorded this, I tried to go back and figure out what happened. I thought maybe he was running a glitch play. I tried to find the PEF slide. I tried to lab it a little bit, see if it was a glitchy one play touchdown against cover two. It is not. I used the exact same setup that my opponent used in the game and nothing changed. Nothing happened at all. I thought that maybe I accidentally uh, changed their assignment. As you can see right here, right before the ball is snapped, I did bring up the secondary adjustments, but that's as far as it went. The ball was immediately hiked after that, meaning that I had no opportunity to actually put him on a different assignment like blitzing the quarterback. So there's really no reason that this happened other than the fact that the game wanted to. That plus the fact that it happened again later in the game inside the 10, where you can see right here when I switched over to a cover three, I mean, what type of diagram is this? Once the play starts, it gets even worse. Every single player on the field does something different and stupid. The safety just runs straight ahead covering nobody. The cornerback outside just runs down to the flat covering nobody. And then this particular player just literally stood there until the play was over. If you back out and take a look at this simple bench switch concept that my opponent is running, every single wide receiver is open. The only receiver that's even close to being covered is this receiver here next to the guy who didn't move throughout the entire play. These two touchdowns were the only touchdowns that my opponent scored throughout the entire game. Now, there are some other things that really can change based off whether the game wants you to lose. Things like actually catching the ball. You can see right here, I mossed two defenders, which is next to impossible. If you go ahead and rewind that, typically uh, you will not come down with balls like this. You'll typically, uh, either the first person will knock it out or the second person will definitely knock it out. Anytime you're in close proximity to defensive players like this, your chance of coming down with a successful catch are very poor. You can see you typically get animations like this when you have too many close defenders around you trying to catch the ball. Now, if the game's trying to get you to lose, like here you're down four with two minutes to go, you'll notice that even things like catching balls on the sideline when wide open become difficult to a point where you can't even get your feet down in bounds. Or on the next play, like this one, a third and 30, even though my receiver has separation and the defender is trailing me, of course the ball's going to get knocked out. Why wouldn't it? Now, sacks can go similarly to catches. A lot of times when a quarterback should rightfully have been sacked and taken a huge loss, a lot of times the ball will just get uh, out barely, maybe just go up in the air about a yard and then drop harmlessly to the ground. If you're noticing this a lot, this is another way of the game trying to bail somebody out. You may even notice something like this where the ball is somewhat in danger, but the defensive players don't even really seem to want the ball. You'll also see this in coverage sometimes where instead of going for an interception, the computer will just basically knock the ball to the ground being happy with that like they just made a play when they could have easily intercepted it. So that's it. That's the video. If you guys want to see more videos like this, more DDA topics, really just meant to be for fun, hit the like button and let me know in the comment section. Other than that, thanks for watching Mad Money Shit Out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.